Good morning, brethren. According to Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with Him, and seated us with Him in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now, brethren, let's prepare our hearts to worship our Lord. My heart of stone was dead to you, asleep within a world that scorned its maker. Into my soul, and I woke up to you, my glorious Savior. You became my all, you became my all. Now I am alive, I am alive in you. You are. You're my own. Oh, my God. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to continue to acknowledge that you are our great God, that you are the God of the universe, that you are the God who sits on your throne. You are from everlasting to everlasting, O Lord. And we just want to praise you, Father, and to come humbly before you, Lord, this morning. And uh, Lord, we just want to ask for your forgiveness, Father God, for all the sins that we have committed, Lord. Lord, may you search our hearts. Uh, re reveal to us, Lord, whatever things that hinders us from worshiping you this morning. Lord, we pray, Father God, that may you just uh, continue to convict us, Father God, of whatever sins that we are harboring, O oh Lord God, in our hearts, Father. And uh, Lord, we just want to come before you this, this morning, O oh Lord God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, humbling ourselves, Father, for indeed we can't do anything, Father God, apart from you, Lord. And uh, Father God, uh, we just want, O oh Lord, to give you praise and thanks, Father God, for all of the blessings that you are continually bestowing upon us. We thank you, Father, for this breath of life, Father God, that you are continually allowing us to borrow from you, Lord. Lord, indeed, you are the source of life, Father God. And so, Father, we thank you. And Lord God, uh, if there are anything, Lord God, that hinders us, Lord, from... Uh, Praising you, Father, this morning, we just want to lay it down before you, O Lord God, and please take them away, Father. And Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity again that we could gather together, Lord, to sing songs of praise to you and to hear your word, Father God, to be convicted by your word, to be encouraged by your word, O Lord, through your speaker. And Lord God, uh, knowing that we can't do anything apart from you, apart from en enablement from you, O Lord God, then we want to to lay down before you, Lord, our petitions this morning. Father, we pray for our world. We pray, Father, that may you bless us with peace, O Lord God. Considering, Lord, the wars and rumors of wars, Father God, that are currently being heard, Father God, around the globe, Lord, we know that we need you, Father God, for we know that you are the source of peace, Father God. Lord, whatever yung nag trigger Father God, sa amin, sa bawat nations, O Lord God, to to rise against one another, O Lord God. Lord, we pray that may we all encounter you, Father God, sa buhay namin, O Lord. Lord, we pray that may you bless us, Lord, with the conviction that you don't want uh, yung uh, kaguluhan, Father God, but that you want, Lord, yung pagmamahal that would surface, Father God, sa, sa earth na ito, Lord. And uh, Father, 
Naniniwala kami, Lord God, that uh, you always know your purpose, Father God, of what is happening. For us believers, O oh Lord God, we pray na ikaw po yung patuloy na mangusap sa amin, sa mga balitang naririnig namin, O oh Lord God. Allow us to continue to be dependent on you, Father God. Allow us to continue to entrust to you everything that is happening around us. Lord, we pray for our local government. Naniniwala kami, Lord, na i reveal nyo po, Father God, yung mga bagay na hindi po kaya aya sa inyong harapan. Lord, we pray that uh, kung sino man po, O Lord God, yung mga nasa position, Lord, that are violating, Father God, yung law nyo, O Lord, we pray that they may, may uh, suffer the consequences of their actions, O Lord God. But uh, Lord, we also would like to pray for your approval, O Lord God, and favor for those, Father God, who are going uh, in aligned sa inyong kalooban, Father God. And uh, Lord, we pray that may you bless each of them, Father God, everyone, Lord, in the government, Father God, that they may also have the opportunity, Father God, to hear your gospel, Lord, and uh, by hearing it, Lord God, that they may also believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, we, we also would like to pray for our nations, Father, for our nation, O Lord, knowing the upcoming uh, typhoon again, O Lord God, after Quinta, Lord, we pray, Father God, that uh, may you just spare, Lord God, families, Lord, uh, here in the Philippines, Father God, from being uh, casualties, O Lord God, by this typhoon, Lord. We pray, if possible, O Lord God, according to your will, na sana po, Father God, ilihis niyo po yung bagyo na ito, na hindi na po siya magkaroon ng uh, landing, O Lord God, sa lupa, O Lord God, but that uh, lumihis na po siya, Father God, and uh, may not uh, cross, Lord God, yung lands, Father God, of of the philippines lord and so spare us father god from its effect lord we are praying also father for our church lord there are so many things that we need to do for you father god uh, through you O lord for for your church father god for your gospel to be preached for your word father god to to have an impact sa ibang tao O lord and so father we just want to pray father for your enablement lord god for the leaders lord we pray for wisdom Ikaw nga po nawa yung patuloy na magbigay ng karunungan, Father God, sa leadership ng church niyo po to be, to really do the things, uh, the priorities, Father God, na itiniwala niyo po sa amin. And that is to go and make disciples of all nations, Father God. Lord, we pray for the upcoming uh, election, Father God. Uh, patuloy niyo nga po sanang bigyan ng wisdom, O Lord God, yung bawat members ng local church na ito, Lord to choose godly uh, leaders, O Lord God. Allow us, Lord, to really assess, Father God, the, the people, Lord God, whom you are uh, bringing here, Father God, to lead us. And sana po, Father God, we may have the uh, conviction, Lord God, na hindi lamang po sa influence nila, Lord, yung maging uh, basihan namin, Father God, ng pag-choose sa inyo, but more than yung influence nila, Lord, is kung lumalakad po ba sila sa inyong uh, kalooban, Father God. Lord, may that be our utmost priority, Father God, of choosing, Lord, yung leaders para sa local church niyo po. And uh, Father God, we would like to also pray for for our upcoming planning, O Lord God, for the next year. It is your church, Lord, and uh, we know that you have established it. We believe that you have established it, Father God. And uh, Lord, we just want to continue to entrust to you, Lord, yung susunod pa pong mga activities, Father God, of, of our church. May you just continue to direct our paths, Father God, that we may not sway to the right or to the left, Lord, but to continue to align, Lord God, lahat ng uh, plano namin para sa iglesia niyo po uh, according sa inyong kalooban, according sa pinaka-main thrust ng church na ito, oh Lord God, which is to make you known, Father God. And uh, Lord, we would like to also entrust to you the the opening, Father God, of Ezra, Lord, for it's another subject, Father. We pray for more people to desire to know you, O Lord God, sa, through this uh, school, Father. We pray, Father God, also for the students that may you just continue to bless them with resources, Father God, to be able to enroll, Father. And uh, Lord, may this school continually be used by you, O Lord, to, to continue to to help, Father God, uh, students, Lord, who are uh, desiring, Father God, to know you more and to deepen their understanding of you, Father God, through through this school, Father God. And uh, 
Lord, we would like to continue to thank you for this Sunday, Lord God, na binigyan niyo po sa amin. Ikaw nga po nawa yung patuloy na manguna sa amin. And uh, Lord, we would like to also entrust to you yung speaker this morning, O oh Lord God, Pastor Raul, Lord, that may you continue to bless him, Father God, with wisdom, Lord, and with boldness, Father God, to really speak your word, Father God, to your hearers, Father God, to your children, Lord. And may we be convicted, Father God, and uh, may we continue to grow, Father God, in our knowledge of you. And may this knowledge, Father God, hindi lamang po uh, maging cognitive knowledge, Lord, but... Uh, May it really go down into our hearts, Father God, and transform us, Lord, uh, sa imahe, Father God, ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Lord, itinitiwala namin sa inyo yung araw na ito. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Good morning, Church. A blessed Sunday, everyone. Welcome to the first uh, Sunday service ngayon pong month of uh, November. Today is November 1. Kumusta po kayo mga kapatid? Ano? Kung mapapansin nyo, tayo po ngayon ay uh, naka-online, fully online worship dahil po meron pong uh, ginagawang uh, power maintenance dun po sa ating uh, mall. Kaya po kung saan naroon po yung ating pong church. And that's why ngayon po ay uh, online po tayo. But don't uh, worry because next week we will resume our physical service. Ayan. So uh, I hope na uh, kayo po ay naabot ng ating pong uh, uh, online worship ngayon pong umaga. No? So uh, dahil nga po uh, hindi po tayo magkakaroon ng physical service ngayong araw na ito, So, imumubuho natin next week ang ating pong uh, communion. Ano? So, I hope to see you physically next week sa ating pong uh, worship service dito po sa church. Okay? So, uh, tayo po ay uh, saglit pong manalangin. Ano? And let's uh, go back to the Lord ngayon pong umaga and entrust to Him our service. Panginoon, salamat po sa iyo pong uh, biyaya sa amin. And we want to grow in uh, knowing you, Father. And we pray, Lord, Nakausapin mo po kami, katagpuin mo po kami ngayong umaga Nawa magkaroon po kami ng encounter sa iyo, Panginoon, through your word And by the Holy Spirit, O Lord, kami po ay empower mo uh, To live lives uh, that are surrendered and devoted to you uh, May you deposit inside our hearts the truth of your word And may we grow by it In Jesus' name we pray Amen, Amen So just a few announcements, mga kapatid uh, Ngayon pong darating po na lunes Bukas po ay magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, uh, start ng panibagong subject sa ating pong ESRA. Ano? So, we invite everyone to join us via Zoom, uh, yung pong Old Testament survey po natin about wisdom and poetry. Ano? Yung mga Psalms, Proverbs, and uh, other wisdom books dun po sa Old Testament. We would like to invite you dahil uh, marami po tayong matututunan patungkol dyan, especially in the area of Bible studies. Okay? And, and also, we would like to announce to you that next next week, That will be November 15. Next next week, we will be having church election. So please uh, uh, join us. Dun po sa election po na yan, we will elect uh, at, uh, additional two elders and deacons. Okay? So uh, we will announce the names of the candidates later on, maybe next week, para po maipag-pray po natin yung ating pong mga candidates. Okay? And uh, also... Uh, Tod nga po na nasabi ko sa inyo, next week po tayo magkakaroon ng communion. 
Okay, so uh, we are continuing our series ngayon pong umaga about uh, inside out discipleship. Ano? And it's very critical for us to know what is the key to an inside out discipleship. Because in the past few weeks, for the last three Sundays, we studied about the human inclination and the resulting problem of being outward focused. Ano, nakita natin doon na tayo dito sa mundo, iba po ang sukatan ng success at tayo po ay natutungo o nagkakaroon ng inclination doon sa tinatawag natin na uh, pagiging outward, ano, outward success. But uh, what is the key to a discipleship that is from the inside out? And that is the question that we are about to answer ngayon pong umaga. The question should be, who, not what, ano, who is the key to a uh, inside-out discipleship? And uh, He is uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to walk in godliness and holiness. Ang banal na Espiritu ang siyang nag empower sa atin upang tayo po ay mamuhay. Ayon sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. So let me just give to you a passage from the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 to 27. And from this passage, we can see uh, yung uh, plano ng Panginoon uh, about the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, he, he intends to give to us His Spirit according to verse 26. And I will give you a new heart and, and a new spirit. And I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So we see here the very important role of the Holy Spirit in transforming lives. Makita po natin ito, hinahilat ko yung word na my spirit, referring to the spirit of God. And that is His plan. Ano? And let, let us see yung mga underlined word dito. Ano? Yung word na within you, it was mentioned two times, referring to our inner being, our, our heart. Uh, God intends to put His Spirit within us, in our inner being. And ano yung purpose niya? Ano? Ang purpose ng Diyos ay baguhin tayo. You see the underlined word? To, to change our hearts. So God will give us new heart and new spirit. How? Through His Spirit within us. At yun yung paraan niya para tayo po ay baguhin. Now, let me just highlight uh, another uh, key word which is mentioned four times. Yung word po na I will. Napansin niyo po yung word na I will. No? Referring to God's action. Ano po ang gagawin po ng banal na Espiritu daw? Ano, ano ng Panginoon? He will be the one to transform us. So let me just clarify this to all of us, mga kapatid. No? The key to transformation is God Himself. He is the one who changes and transforms lives. Tayo po, instrumento lang ng Diyos to, to disciple other people, pero ang Diyos po ang nagbabago ng mga puso, no? ng tao. No? And that's why if God is the one who changes lives, it is not uh, credited to us. No? Hindi tayo dapat ang maitaas kapag ka nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa buhay ng mga tao, kundi walang iba, kundi ang ating Panginoon. Now, what will be the effect of this transformation? We see here, I underlined yung pong phrase dito that uh, the Holy Spirit that is within us uh, will cause us to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So we see here that the Holy Spirit is the one who will enable us to obey the commandments of the Lord, the Word of God. So we see here, mga kapatid, na importante po ang banal na Espiritu, ang role ng banal na Espiritu para po tayo po ay makasunod sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon because the Holy Spirit helps us to grow, to mature, and be transformed by the Word of God. So ang critical need po, mga kapatid, sa discipleship is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. We cannot divorce the two. Yung pong Spirit and Word, they go together. And these two are very crucial in transforming lives. Mga kapatid, huwag po nating kakalimutan yan. This is the critical need. In our observation in many churches, there are uh, two possible responses of churches when, with regards to the Holy Spirit. Some church they honor the Lord. They honor the Holy Spirit. 
but other other churches they ignore the Holy Spirit. And napaka crucial po nang mga kapatid because sabi ko nga kanina the Holy Spirit plays a very important role in changing our lives. Alam niyo marami pong mga churches ano uh, they have so much curriculum and uh, marami pong mga teaching materials but still struggle to have transformation in the lives of the believers. Now, what is missing? Ano sa tingin nyo ang problema? Why many churches, in spite of the many cur- discipleship curriculum and teaching materials, still struggle to have transformed lives in the, in the membership, in the people of God? The answer is very, very clear, mga kapatid. The answer is the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is ignored. Now, how can we imagine, mga kapatid, to have discipleship apart from the work of the Holy Spirit? Because we cannot walk in godliness and in holiness apart from the Holy Spirit. So today, let me give you a message about uh, this important topic, you know, the Spirit-filled life. The Spirit-filled life. Isang buhay na punong-puno ng banal na Espiritu sa ating mga buhay and our text is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. So let's read uh, yung ating pong passage beginning in verse 18. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see in this passage that the feeling of the Holy Spirit is a command you know, to every believer, not just to the Christians who are, who, are, who are in the ministry, not just for the pastors, but it is a command for every believer we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we have to see yung pong uh, mga salitang binanggit, you know, be filled actually is a passive tense is in passive tense, which means, mga kapatid, that the doer of the feeling is no other than the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the one filling us, and we need to be filled, which means we need to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. Okay? So it is a command to every believer. And let me give it to you, mga kapatid, ito pong uh, message natin ngayong umaga that I want you to remember. The Spirit is the key. The Spirit is the key. Ang banal na espiritu ang susi upang magkaroon ng uh, inside-out discipleship. Okay? Magkaroon ng transformation sa ating pong mga buhay. Now, what does it mean to be spirit-filled? Because the term spirit-filled is uh, usually misunderstood in many uh, churches. Ano ba ang kahulugan ng uh, pagiging spirit-filled? See, number one, yung una po nating pag-uusapan dito is the expression of the spirit-filled life. What are the expressions? What is the nature of a spirit-filled life? For some people, they are looking for speaking in tongues as the expression of a spirit-filled life. Some people, they are looking for uh, ram- yung kinakailangan, merong uh, anointing. Some people, they, they, uh, they want the spiritual gifts and they, uh, they look for it to say that we are spirit-filled. Some people uh, think, uh, look for rolling around, weeping, crying, or laughing. Ang dami pong mga expressions na hinaharap ng tao when it comes to the feeling of the Holy Spirit. But we have to go back to the context of the passage that we just read for us to understand what does it mean to become spirit-filled. Hindi po natin yan dapat bigyan ng sarili nating pananaw, ano? but we have to, to listen to what the Word of God says with regards to being filled by the Holy Spirit. And let's see, yung pong mga words na binanggit po dito or yung mga clauses, these are the modifiers or the verbs, supporting verbs that are used to uh, give meaning doon sa, ano, doon sa command which is be filled. Ano? Ito daw yung mga uh, actions na kinakailangan gawin. Ano? Uh, we see here, addressing one another in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Another word is singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord 
Jesus Christ. So we see here mga kapatid na yung pong mga seta ditong binanggit ano, about singing, addressing one another with songs, with singing. Ano po ang kahulugan nito mga kapatid? It does not mean na uh, when we talk to each other, we sing. <laughs> na para tayong orchestra, ano, para tayong nasa high school musical, ano, na, or, or sa Frozen. Ano, na, 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 nakarinig na ba kayo ng ganong awit ng orchestra? Ano? Na merong, pag nag, maawit yung isa, sasagot yung isa ng awit din. Ano? That's not what it means to uh, sing to each other, to address one another with spiritual songs, with hymns and songs. Ano pong pinapakidito itong mga patid? Yung pong singing at saka yung word dito na makita natin, yung thanksgiving, are very crucial in this life of a spirit-filled person. Bakit po binanggit po yun? Ano ba ang kahulugan ng singing from the heart? We see here yung word na singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. With your heart. So it uh, overflows from within us. And what does it mean, mga kapatid? Singing and Uh, giving thanks, it shows, mga kapatid, the very important element of a spiritual, uh, spirit-filled life, which is what we call joy. It is joy. A spirit-filled life is characterized by fullness of joy. And that's why uh, I agree with what uh, John Piper said, that being filled with the Spirit means basically having great joy in God. Let me repeat, being filled with the Spirit means basically having great joy in God. Because according to the passages, in many passages of the New Testament, they go together. For example, in Acts chapter 13, verse 52, we may read from here that the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So we see here yung pong correlation between these two things. Being filled with the Spirit and being filled with joy. And they go together. Yung kagalakan, punong-puno ng kagalakan at punong-puno puno ng banal, o oh, puspos ng banal na Espiritu. So we see here, mga kapatid, that the characteristics of a Spirit-filled life is that it is filled with joy. There is an overflowing joy of thanksgiving and singing praises to the Lord. What does it mean, mga kapatid? To sing praises together, it means, mga kapatid, we acknowledge and we declare the awesomeness and the wonders of God, His greatness in our lives. So, it overflows from within, mga kapatid, from within us. So, that's the first characteristics of a spirit-filled life. It is filled with joy. It is accompanied, accompanied with joy in the Lord. And uh, itong kagalakan na ito, mga kapatid, ay napakahalaga dahil uh, they go together with the, Holy, uh, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Notice the direct connection between the two, ano, being filled with the Spirit and being filled with joy. Joy here, mga kapatid, does not refer actually to some sort of happiness. Ano? But this is actually the inward work of the Holy Spirit sa atin, ano? No one can manufacture this kind of joy because it is from the Holy Spirit. We know that the fruit of the Holy Spirit, ano nga yung isa sa fruit ng Holy Spirit? One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, ano pa, gentleness, faithfulness, and the list goes on. Pero naandun po ang kagalakan, ang kagalakan, the real joy from within, we cannot manufacture that. It comes from the Holy Spirit filling us and in response, we overflow with joy. There is joy sa ating mga puso. Let me ask you this question, mga kapatid. Do you have joy in your life? In, in the ministry? Or do you feel uh, yung burden? Do you feel uh, discouraged? Do you feel uh, uh, anxious about many things in life? So a spirit-filled life is a, jo- a, 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 a spirit-filled life is characterized by joy. So the chief emphasis of the spirit-filled life is joy, and joy is the vital sign of that life. Now, where does that joy come from? We see from another passage that we will look at. Dito po sa 
uh, passage sa pag-aaral natin mamaya, yung ano ba yung accompany nitong joy na to, no? So, it is accompanied with faith in God. Merong pananampalataya sa Diyos. Ito ay, itong kagalakan na ito ay nanggagaling sa ating pong pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. We see that uh, in the person of, uh, for example, si Stephen, he is a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. We see here the direct connection ng word na full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Another person mentioned is uh, Barnabas in Acts chapter 11, verse 24. He was a good man, full of the Spirit and of faith. So merong punong pananampalataya. Ito pong uh, si Barnabas at saka si Stephen. So it is the accompaniment. Ito yung kasama ng buhay na puspos ng banal na espiritu. It is also full of joy and it is also full of faith. So what does it tell us mga kapatid? That they go together. Na ang pananampalataya mga kapatid, hindi lamang po yan important for our salvation. But even for our sanctification. We need faith. We need to be full of faith. For us to be sanctified, for us to live in the life, in, in, in uh, holiness. And we uh, see that amazingly in a verse, in a passage from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Sabi dito ni Apostle Pablo, May the God of hope fill you with joy, with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. We see here the words that, that were used by the Apostle Paul about the filling of God, filling of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you. And ano daw yung meron sa fill, filling na yun? With all joy. There is joy in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And peace in believing. And this is faith. Do you remember that? Faith. So that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound, you may abound in hope. This is Paul's prayer for the Romans, uh, for, for the believers in, the, in Rome. He prays for fullness, and that fullness is accompanied with joy and with faith. So, yan po yung mga mahalagang kipo na kinakilangan makita po natin. These are the expressions of a spirit-filled life. Now, how does this happen sa atin, mga kapatid? How do we overflow in joy and in, in faith? Ano po ang sekreto para isang kristyano ay mag-overflow sa joy at saka sa faith? Ano po ang bidanggit kanina doon? We need to worship the Lord. We need to give thanks to the Lord for all that He has done for our lives. Because when we are doing that, saan tayo nakafocus mga kapatid? When we are worshiping and singing praises to the Lord, saan tayo nakafocus? We are focused on God and His character. And whenever we are giving thanks to Him, saan tayo nakafocus mga kapatid? We are focused on the works that He has done for our lives. And when we do that, mga kapatid, that is uh, the element and the expression of the Spirit-filled life. We need to worship the Lord and we need to thank the Lord for all that He has done in our lives. And this is my question, mga kapatid. When was the last time you thanked the Lord? That is my challenge sa ating pong pananalangin, mga kapatid. Ano, mahalaga ho na tayo po. We, we need to begin and end our prayer with thanksgiving. Paano po natin gagawin, mga kapatid? You may list it down. List down the things uh, that you are thankful for sa ating Panginoon. And that will be uh, the basis of your thanksgiving sa ating pong Panginoon. So we need to uh, have that habit of worship and thanksgiving sa ating Panginoon. So that is the, the, the first point natin, the expression of the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go to another thing, another point here, it, and this is the meaning of the Spirit-filled life. Now, what does it mean? Ano, paano natin masasabi o ano ba ang kahulugan ng isang puspos ng banal na Espiritu? So, we need to also go back to the passage that we just read about the feeling of the Spirit. We read, uh, let's go back sa verse 18, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, ano po yung connection nun? Ano? Bakit po inilagay dyan yung word na drunk, do not get drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. The key to understand this verse actually is the word but. 
Okay? Whenever we see the word but, it means there is contrast between the, the thing that was mentioned first and the second thing that was mentioned. So there is contrast between the two. Ano? Getting drunk and being filled with the Spirit. Ano po ang kalugan ng mga kapatid? Bakit po all of a sudden, after Paul mentioned the word drunk, getting drunk, binagit niya yung word na uh, be, be filled with the Spirit, yung command ng ating Panginoon. Ano po yung connection ng mga kapatid? No? There is contrast between the two. Yung ating pong buhay, ay yung, yung, uh, yung drinking of, of alcohol at saka yung being filled with the Spirit is directly contrast because Ano pong pinapakita nito mga kapatid? Sinasabi dito ni Apostle Pablo na huwag tayong magpa-consume. Do not get consumed by wine, but be consumed by the Holy Spirit. So instead na ang wine ang siyang magpuno sa atin, ang siyang mag-influence sa ating actions, sa ating buhay, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to influence our action, our lives, to lead us Spirit-filled life. By the way, I heard from a sermon of Edmund Chan that uh, the, the feeling of the Holy Spirit actually is not to lose control, ano, but to gain control. Kapag ka ikaw daw po ay lasing, you lose control of yourself. Eh, no? But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you gain control of your life. You know what to do. You know to assess things because God is with you. God, the Holy Spirit, uh, enables you and empowers you to live according to His will and you gain control of your life. And that's why one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. You can control yourself, yourself because the Spirit that is in you uh, is guiding you, helping you, empowering you to live self-controlled lives. So we see here, the first thing that we have to identify or in uh, understanding the meaning of Spirit-filled life is that it is not a one-time event. Hindi po yan isang beses lang nangyari o mangyayari sa buhay ng isang Kristiyano. Because marami pong mga tao, they misunderstood baptism of the Holy Spirit with the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you this, mga kapatid. Those two things actually are different. Ano, baptism of the Holy Spirit and yung pong tinatawag natin na feeling of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because baptism of the Holy Spirit is a one-time event in the life of the believers while yung pong feeling of the Holy Spirit is in continuous continuous sense. Yung command po is always, we should always be filled with the Holy Spirit. Unlike yung baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit was first mentioned by John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 and Luke chapter 3 verse 16. We remember John the Baptist saying about Jesus Christ, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I. He, referring to Christ, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Sabi ni John the Baptist, I baptize you with water, but he, Jesus Christ, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So, meaning, mga kapatid, baptism of the Holy Spirit is the work of Jesus Christ. No person can do that. Even the apostles, they cannot baptize people with, uh, with, with uh, the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus Christ's work. Only Christ can do that. Now, let's see when will this happen. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we're all made to drink of one spirit. Notice the words that was mentioned here. We were all baptized. Sa pamagitan ng alin? In one spirit. For in one spirit, we were all baptized. Ano po ang pinapakita nyo? It is past tense. Nangyari na po sa mga mana ng pataya. So Paul is referring to all the believers of uh, in Corinth, and he is telling them, Lahat tayo ay nabautismuhan ng banal na espiritu. Paano daw? Sabi into one body. Ano po yung body po na yun, no? Yung church. We became part of Christ's body by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when did that happen, mga kapatid? When did we get included sa katawan ng ating Panginoong Jesus? When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ during our salvation. That's according to uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that when we believe, ang sabi po dito, and you were also included in Christ, 
when you heard the word of truth and the, uh, the gospel of your salvation, when you believe, you were marked in Him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit now resides in us. Nasa sa atin na po ang banal na Espiritu because we got saved. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it happened, the baptism of the Holy Spirit happened just once and for all. It is a one-time event. And if you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have already been baptized by the Holy Spirit. That is just a one-time event. But the feeling of the Holy Spirit is another thing because the feeling of the Holy Spirit is in continuous sense. We see that on our second point. Ano? It is a continuous command. Na isang Panginoon na araw-araw, ano, daily, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, mayita natin yan doon sa pag binasa, pag pinag-aaralan po natin yung original language po na, ano, this is in continuous sense. It's, it means, mga kapatid, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. Every day, we need to make a decision to surrender our will sa kalooban ng ating pong Panginoon. That is what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It means to surrender ourselves fully to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit to consume us, our will, our action, our lives. And this is very important, mga kapatid. The Spirit-filled life is very crucial for Christ-likeness, for us to be like Christ, for our spiritual maturity, Araw-araw, kinakailangan po natin na we need to walk in the Spirit according to Galatians chapter 5 and not gratify to do, uh, sa work of flesh dahil magkalaban po ang work of the flesh and work of the Holy Spirit. So this is very crucial, mga kapatid. We need to understand that the feeling of the Holy Spirit is a command to every believer and this is in continuous sense. Now let's go to the third let me just remind you once again about our message ngayon. The key is the Spirit. The Spirit is the key for a, uh, an inside-out discipleship. Now, let's go to the third, which is the key to the Spirit-filled life. Ano naman daw po ang paraan upang tayo ay magkaroon ng Spirit-filled life? Now, I learned from Edmund Chan a, uh, a, an acronym, yung word na SOS. Okay? Yung SOS, ano nga natin ginagawa yan? Kapag ka po merong ano, no, tayo ay humihingi ng tulong, ano, SOS. But anyway, yung SOS refers to letter S, scriptures. Yung O refers to obedience. And the third, uh, letter S, means surrender. These three are very crucial in having a spirit-filled life. Now, let me just... Uh, uh, Study, ito pong mga words na ito. No? Sur, uh, yung word po ay scripture. As I told you mga kapatid, we cannot live a spirit-filled life apart from the word of God. It is not merely an experience. Mga kapatid, tandaan po natin that experience alone is not indicative of the spirit-filled life. Hindi natin pwede sabihin na puro karanasan lang yan, ano? apart from the word of God. It should be grounded on scriptures, not in human, not just in human experience. So, uh, we need to go back to the Word of God. We need to be rooted, mga kapatid, sa salita ng Diyos. Because as I told you, we cannot separate the feeling of the Holy Spirit with the Word of God. As we, we I read to you yung, uh, yung pong uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, <coughs> nabasa natin doon kanina, that the Holy Spirit will transform our hearts, and will allow us, will enable us to obey the Word of God, the commands of the Lord. So that goes together, the Word and the Spirit. And if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need daily uh, input, intake, daily intake of the Word of God. We need to be rooted in the Word. And that is my challenge, mga kapatid, because so many Christians do not know the Word of God. When was the last time we had a meaningful time with God in His Word? Kailan po yung huling panahon, mga kapatid, na tayo po ay personal na nag-aaral, nagbabasa, nag-meditate ng salita ng Diyos. And we need to meditate the Word of God day and night. Make it our daily habit. And one of my uh, uh, advice about isa sa atin is we need to have weekly Sabbath. 
Kinakailangan po natin yan na tayo po ay magpahinga once a week in the presence of the Lord to be empowered sa ating pong spiritual life. Kailangan po natin po yan, mga kapatid. We need to go back to the Word of God. And apart from the Word of God, we cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. And another word na nabanggit dito ni Edmund Chan is the word the obedience. Obedience means walking in the Spirit. That's the challenge in the lives of the believers because there is a war, civil war, between the flesh and between the Holy Spirit residing in us. Magkalabang po yan at nagdi-desire, magkaiba po ang desire ng flesh at ng Holy Spirit sa ating pong mga buhay. And so, what should we do, mga kapatid? We need to uh, walk in the Spirit and that means we need to obey the Lord. And, and walking in the Spirit is actually a very difficult thing. It requires surrender. Yung pangatlong word natin, surrender. It requires daily surrender sa ating Panginoon. We need to walk and we need to obey the Lord. We need to walk in the Holy Spirit and obey the Lord sa ating pong mga buhay. We need to come back to God. We need to walk sa, kanyang, sa uh, kalooban ng ating Panginoon. And when we walk in the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid, there are times that we will fall. That's a reality. Just like a person uh, who is uh, learning to walk, isang bata ano, na nag, nag-aaral pa ng maglakad. Do you remember a child who learns to walk? Naalala niyo pa? Yung inyong pong mga anak o yung mga pamangkin na nag-aaral maglakad. Ano? Sa kanilang paglalakad, they may stumble, they may fall. And that's my, my encouragement to you, mga kapatid. If you ever fall, We have to remember to rise up again because the Holy Spirit is in us and He will enable us to rise up again and to walk in the Spirit. That's a challenge, mga kapatid. I fell many times in the flesh, in the work of the flesh in my life. And one thing I do whenever I, go, I fall, I go back to the Holy Spirit for empowerment and with repentant heart. Kinakailangan po natin yung mga kapatid Daily, we need to surrender our wills to the Lord and be filled with God. And lastly, mga kapatid, yung word dito is surrender. Surrender means giving ourselves fully to the Lord, wholeheartedly, allowing Him to, uh, to change us and to lead us sa buhay po natin ayon po sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Sabi po ni Edmund Chan, the Spirit-filled life is not about how much you have of the Holy Spirit but how much the Holy Spirit has of you. Let me repeat that. The Spirit-filled life is not about, about how much you have of the Holy Spirit. It is not how much you have of the Holy Spirit. Hindi yung, ako, konti na lang yung Holy Spirit ko, kailangan ko ulit magdagdag, mauubos na. That's not what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not for you to, uh, to uh, gain more Holy Spirit in your life, but for the Holy Spirit to gain control or gain Uh, much of you in, in, uh, in the life of the Holy Spirit. It means, mga kapatid, in, uh, when, when we pray to the Holy Spirit, we don't pray, Holy Spirit, come to me. But we pray, Lord, I come to you. I surrender my life to you. That is what it means to surrender, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We allow the Holy Spirit to take over sa ating pong mga buhay. And we need to do it daily. That is the key We need to pray, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I allow you to take control of my life because you are the one who can lead me to holiness and sanctification. And that's a challenge, mga kapatid. We need scriptures, we need obedience, and we need what we call surrender. That is very crucial for a spirit-filled life. Now, in conclusion, mga kapatid, let me just tell you this, that... The spirit-filled life is not, uh, hindi po yan araw-araw na isang tao po ay filled. Even po, kahit sino, kahit mga apostol, hindi po lagi pong spirit-filled. No, there is no person on earth who, ever, uh, who is filled with the Holy Spirit all the time. Why? Because it, is, it requires daily surrender sa ating pong Panginoon. And in our spiritual journey, We will stumble. We will fall. 
But we need to go back to the Lord. We need to allow the Lord to change us as we surrender sa kanyang kalooban. And that is my question ngayong umaga, mga kapatid. Where are you in your spiritual journey? Do you walk in the Holy Spirit? And do you allow Him to take full control of your life? And if you do that, you will gain control of your life. If you allow the Holy Spirit to control you and to lead you, sabi nga po sa isang uh, nabasa kong, uh, mayroon po kong nabasa ng isang uh, phrase o isang quote, The human spirit fails unless it is filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat that. The human spirit fails unless it is filled with the Holy Spirit. The, whole, the, the spirit of the huma, human, we will fail. But the Holy Spirit will give us the power not to fail, but to, to live victorious life. Mga kapatid, do not allow the work of the flesh to make you feel defeated in your journey, in your spiritual walk. You need the power of the Holy Spirit, and we need to live the Spirit-filled life. Once again, our message this morning is this. The Spirit is the key. We need to go back to the Lord. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to rule in our lives. Again, mga kapatid, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, ngayon pong umaga, nais po namin nakilalanin ang iyo pong mga ginawa para sa amin. Kami po ay uh, binago mo sa pamagitan ng Banda Spirito na sa amin. At patuloy kami pong binabago mo. You are sanctifying us. And thank you for this journey, Lord, that the Holy Spirit... Uh, you have given us your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, to live lives that are obedient to you. Lord, ngayon pong umaga, if there are things that are not yet surrendered to you sa aming pong mga buhay, Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to understand that we will fail apart from the Holy Spirit in our lives. So God, please uh, allow us, O oh Lord, to understand the work of the Spirit in our lives. And give us uh, your, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, O oh God, to say no to all forms of sins and ungodliness. And Lord, allow us, O oh God, to walk in holiness and in purity because it is your will for us. It is your call for us to live in holiness. Father, we submit to you. We honor you. And we, we, may you fill us with joy. May you fill us with thanksgiving, knowing that we are with you and God is with us in every uh, part of our lives, in everything that we are doing, Lord. Alam po namin na ikaw ay lagi namin kasama. Hindi mo kami pinapabayaan. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for being with us. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you, you may empower us. And as we dig deeper to your word, patuloy, Lord, na kami po ay lumalim. At patuloy na uh, ang aming mga buhay ay iyo pong punuin, puspusin, gamitin para sa iyong kaluwalatian. And may we grow in maturity by the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Ito po aming dalangin sa tanging pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Salamat po sa salita ng Diyos na ating pong napahinggan ngayong pong umaga. For our giving, mga kapatid, you can, you can give online or go to our church uh, to uh, give your offering. Ano? And uh, also, we would like to announce afternoon, mamaya po, 2 p.m. ay tuloy po ang consecration ang uh, Bible Schools on Wheels. So I hope to, uh, to have you there sa ating pong, uh, Bible training po na yan, ano, with Bruce Wilkinson. And I hope to see you again next week. Please prepare next Sunday yung ating pong communion. Ano. Uh, tayo pong lahat muli ay manalangin. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen, amen, amen. Maraming salamat po mga kapatid. At pagpalain po tayo ng ating Panginoon.